Greetings from Snake Mountain Boat Works on Saturday, March 16, 2024. I'd like to introduce you to Simon Fletcher in this video. So let's start out watching him hand sand the decks on one of his creations. Simon never used power tools. Everything was done by hand. He worked alone, save for his partner and wife, Jane, who did all of the upholstery work and all of the finished furnishing. Simon began Fletcher Boat Works in Port Angeles, Washington in 1985. He built only two boats a year. He never had an employee. He and Jane did everything. And he continued building boats until into the this century. I can't find the, the date, but I believe he closed the business somewhere around uh, 2006, having built approximately 25 vessels from beginning to end from 1985 until 2006. His driving mission was to build boats that looked, felt, and ran like the boats of the 1940s and 50s. He had a particular affection for the Speedliner, and many of his hulls are very Speedliner-esque, although uh, you can actually sit in seats, not kneel on them with a suicide throttle on your left hand. So, I'd like to introduce you though, to what is now my wife's and my Fletcher Speedliner. He calls it the Fletcher Classic. He built it in 1991. And uh, yesterday as we were finishing the process of temporarily installing all of the hardware, Joe was way up under the, the bow and he looked back at the dashboard and he said, oh my God, and there it is, Simon Fletcher etched his own version of a hull identification number by hand on the backside of the dashboard. The boat also has a, a proper hull identification number uh, stamped into the top of its transom. But the boats are just incredible. We feel so fortunate to have found our way to taking over the stewardship of this boat that Simon built in 1991. Uh, the previous video gives you a lot of detail. I'll just add that the boat left Port Angeles, Washington in 1991 and was transported by rail to New Jersey where it went into storage. A couple of years later, the owner and his wife uh, moved to Virginia Tappan Hannock, Virginia, and brought the boat with them and put her into storage once again. Last Saturday, Frank Molay and I met th that family and spent four hours loading her into my trailer because the Clarks had decided that having reached the ripe old age of the, the 90s, it was time to pass the boat along, pass the stewardship along to somebody else. Well, we ended up being the somebody else. 
She's an incredible boat. Oh, she has never, ever, ever touched water. Her 90 horsepower oil injection 1993 Merck outboard has never touched water. Her Armstrong engine mount has never touched water. In fact, it's never touched the boat as neither the Armstrong nor the Merck were ever installed. In fact, when we got the boat here, we found that most of the hardware had been carefully packed off the boat into uh, cushion cardboard boxes. But we thought it'd be kind of fun to give you a chance to see her with all her hardware on, her seats in place, and I'm going to do that now, just hoping that the, the sun stays out for just a little while. So here we go outdoors, and we'll find Nyad. Nyad it were water nymphs in Greek mythology. She, I think you'll agree when you see her and think about how she's going to skate across the water that uh, Nyad's the perfect name for her. So here we go. I'll be right back. So here she is. You see her the very first time all of her hardware has actually been installed on the boat. Most of it's just temporarily installed, but it's there. So we can get a full feeling for what she looks like, how she presents herself. Her hull sides are, actually the whole boat is framed in Honduras mahogany. Uh, the uh, chine planks and the keel are white oak. And on the hull sides, Simon, first laid down a layer of Honduras mahogany plywood on the whole side, all the way front to back, and then planked it as you see here. I believe as I look at it, the whole boat is done in West system. Uh, this is the original finish. Jane's last brush strokes are still with us. But the boat's been sitting since 1991. So we will remove all the hardware and hand block sand it with 320 very carefully, sanding only with the grain, just enough to take this sheen off. And then on the decks, we will apply something around four to five coats of Pettit Captain's Ultra Clear. And on the hull sides, we will apply about the same number of coats probably, uh, but it will be Pettit Flagship High Build. Now, the lettering, Nyad and Fletcher, is gold leaf, so we must be very, very careful. You can see that most of the hardware, and I believe, and I, maybe Fletcher could tell us, is uh, it, it all, except for the bow handle, which has a very Penyan feel to it, to me. Uh, these are pre-war windshield, standards. The uh, step pads are actually teak. They've been stained black. The fabric is Chris Craft Red Tolex. And it was done just beautifully. I'm just guessing, but I'll guess that those ceilings are Honduras mahogany as well. But you can see how this thing is framed. This hull is 
just absolutely solid. It has a double layer bottom that is all Honduras mahogany. Everything is just as tight as the day she left Port Angeles long ago. That scoop has a, a strong crisscross flavor. The styling of the engine bay access, the hatch also looks very crisscrossy. Really interesting spray rails up fairly high on the hull side. But you have to understand, the Armstrong engine mount is going to come out to about there. At that point, we will attach the 90 horsepower Merck oil injected three cylinder outboard. And I got a feeling, and evidently, Simon guessed with Nyan's first owner that uh, this boat's going to be pretty fast. We have a beautiful Italian steering wheel that will be installed. But I'm not going to fill the dashboard with a variety of, uh, of gauges. We'll probably put a temperature gauge there because this Merc's going to be turning over at a fairly high RPM. It is our understanding from the previous owner that Simon designed and crafted the Bergie pole. But I'll have to be on the phone with Captain Rudy to have him manufacture a proper Bergie flag for me. Very understated cutwater. Beautiful decks. So, let's put our tonneau cover on and see her ready to be uh, put back in the shop. I'll be back in a minute. So here she is ready to go back into the shop. That's a really nice tonneau, very heavy, very waterproof. And she also has a wonderful transport cover that is fabricated with a fabric that is sombrella on the outside, but very soft, fuzzy, glove-like surface, surface on the inside. So, we'll put her in, we'll start working on her next week, and uh, if everything goes right, I hope to see you at the ABM A ACS show, uh, ACBS show in Clayton, New York, I believe it's August 2 and 3 this year. She'll be there, unless something terrible befalls her between now and then. But we're hoping it won't. With that, we'll end NIAD's introduction to you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye for now from Snake Mountain Boatworks.